So Jeff, you know, um, there are lots of variety of microbes in our soil. And, and some of them are allies uh, for the cannabis plant, but some of them are pathogenic and could cause harm. And you know, we're, we're all wanting to, to grow the, the, the number and variety of microbes in our soil, but we don't necessarily want to feed uh, the pathogenic ones, pathogenic ones. So what are your recommendations for us to, to feed and encourage the helpful microbes without uh, feeding the pathogenic ones? Great question. Great question. I'm not sure I have a great answer, but it's a great question. Right on. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the, the, the over, overall answer is to make sure that your soil is well aerated. Oh. In other words, oxygen. You don't want to have anaerobic pockets. You're going to have them anyway because they're all over the soil. But you don't want to, you know, you don't want your soil to become anaerobic any more than you want your compost pile to become anaerobic. Um, the, the, the pathogens tend to be anaerobic. And the, the aerobic microbes, the ones that rely on oxygen, tend not to be pathogenic. And so uh, keeping the soil well aerated, good soil structure uh, is, is very important. Um, and, and I think that that's sort of, again, the over, over, overreaching answer is you want to make sure everything is well aerated. If you're going to put compost teas down, you want to make sure they're aerated compost teas, not anaerobic compost teas. Um, in, in terms of uh, the soil itself, you should take into some consideration. A lot of people won't use manures in their composts. Uh, I don't use manures in my compost. Um, I don't need them. The reason why people use manures in compost is because that's how people got rid of manures. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, we all had horses. We all had, you know, carriages and stuff. And, and so everybody had, you know, does, you know, you go out and find manures now. You don't have your own, but on the other hand, you can make compost without manures. And, and if you use, if you use uh, you know, leaf clippings and, and, and uh, uh, you know, grass clippings and you don't have a dog in the yard, then chances are you have fewer E. coli in that, in that compost. And so, so I, I think that's sort of the second half. Be careful what you put in the soil. Mm -hmm. and, and there again, uh, you want to pay attention. Uh, if you buy soil from some place that, that, and you use manure in your compost, and, and there are a lot of medicines that go into the, into the animals that produce that stuff, you might have some problems. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure your compost is really good, com well done. There aren't any spots that weren't composted, and, and, you, want, and you want to be careful. But again, aeration tends to cure and correct a lot of this stuff. And really, ventilation, by the way, it, it is a form of aeration. It's just above ground. So on that note, yeah. so so um, you know, I still just consider myself a novice cannabis grower, um, and I s often will still get compacted soils, and then um, and then sometimes a hydrophobic top, so the water just runs off. Right. Um, so I understand aerated teas because sure. I use aerated compost teas all summer. Um, what can we do to aerate the soil once it's already compacted? Sure. sure. Um, well, if you're going in, in containers, uh, first of all, I, 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 I leave the old plant in the container. Uh, and then when I put the new plant in, the roots will grow down the same zones into the, you know, as the other, as the old roots there. So it makes it easier for the plant to, to expand. Um, compost itself will aerate, you know, the microbes will move from the compost down into the soil. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a little light actual aeration, like you were aerating a lawn. You know, you take a like taking a screwdriver yeah, and just sticking yeah, it in. Yeah, screwdriver is great, or a toothpick. Not, you know, a toothpick, a chopstick, something mm -hmm. like that, and stick it in a couple of places. You know, you don't want to do it all over the place and screw up the root system. Um, but there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, and then you got to go back and take a look and see what your practices are. Why is it getting comp right. compacted? And it could be you're walking around the stuff too much. Maybe you need the mulch. Mulch will help. Um, you know, maybe your soil needs to be changed, but, but it is a problem. Uh, aeration is the key, though. So what do you think about this solution? A friend recommended me once. He said, well, like, well this last summer, had this compacted pot. And he's like, listen, um, it's only a 10-gallon pot, so, so you don't have a lot of room to play. Um, but it went, had, was dry, so it wasn't holding onto the sides anymore. Right. And so he recommended we just pull the pot out 
and cut off about the last third, um, you know, f fluff up the bottom of the roots, put in some fresh, properly structured soil from somewhere else, and put the plant back in. And as the new roots grow into that soil, um, it will kind of give the pot, you know, a new sense of life. Do you buy that? Eh, you know, I'd rather go out and get a, a 14 uh, gallon uh, pot. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, and put the soil around the existing root ball. I think when you cut that root ball, and, you know, cut off that root ball, right. you're, you're impacting the, the, the ability of the leaves to take up the nutrients that they need. And, and so I think any, the least disturbance to the roots as possible is, is, is the key thing. And so I'd just get a bigger pot. Right on, cool. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>